Thursday, December 17th, 2020 meeting of the Bayshore Bikeway Working Group. And I guess in order to get things started, we uh, should probably do a roll call. So uh, Linda, do you wanna do that now? Yes, be happy to Chair Cox. I'm just gonna check, sure. Um, so uh, Council Member Galvez, City of Chula Vista. Present. Council Member Donovan, City of Coronado. Here. Council Member Libe Gonzalez, City of, of Imperial Beach. Uh, present here. Council Member Bush, City of National City. Here. Council Member Moreno, City of San Diego. Chair Greg Cox, County of San Diego. Here. Andy Hanshaw, San Diego County Bicycle Coalition. Here. Commissioner Valderrama, Port of San Diego. Okay. And um, Mr. Y. Woody, public member. Present. Great. Chair, we do have a quorum. Very good. Um, just a couple of acknowledgments. Obviously, with the elections, we've got some changes that uh, are going to be taking place, and some of them have already uh, taken place. We're delighted to welcome uh, Matthew Leva Gonzalez from the city of Imperial Beach, uh, replacing uh, Mark West. Uh, Matthew, welcome, and, and you're join a, joining a very uh, austere group of people, but uh, we've got some good things coming together, and, and we're delighted to have you as a part of that. And then uh, I understand that that uh, Jack Fisher will be your alternate. So if you're not available, I guess uh, Matthew, uh, Jack will be filling in for you for the city of Imperial Beach. And then for the city of National City, we're delighted to walk, uh, welcome uh, Marcus Bush as the new representative from the city of National City. Uh, my understanding is, is uh, Mona is gonna be the, uh, Mona Rios will be the alternate for National City. The county will have a new member uh, starting in January. I would assume it's going to be Nora Vargas, but I, I don't think they made the, uh, or they won't make the uh, uh, appointments until the first meeting in January on the, on the 4th of uh, January. But uh, delighted to have uh, all of you as a part of uh, a group that's been working on a vision for, gosh, I guess it's close to 40 years, something like that. But uh, we know that the, the funding is there for most of the other segments of the Bayshore Bikeway, particularly in National City and in Logan Heights, and working on tie-ins to the uh, Choyas Creek uh, Bikeway and working on the border to, uh, to the Bayshore uh, connection through San Ysidro. So a lot of exciting things that are coming together. Um, the first item on our agenda is a recognition of outgoing working group members. And we are delighted to have with us here today, I can see him on the, on the screen, uh, Hassan Ikrata, who is the, I'm not even sure what his title is, executive director or general manager or a big but, 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 whatever it is for, for Sandag, but he's a, he's a pretty important fellow and he wanted to be here to say a few words at the beginning of our meeting today. So Hassan. Thank you, Supervisor Cox. Uh, thank you, and thank you again for your amazing service to this region. Uh, call me whatever you want. You can call me anything you want, Supervisor. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is my pleasure to thank everyone uh, for their hard work uh, and dedication to the Bayshore Bikeway. Uh, to date, three quarters of the bikeway uh, is complete with additional, mile, additional miles going into construction over the next uh, year or so. Uh, I'm so pleased to recognize our outgoing members. Uh, Commissioner Duki Valdemar, Port of San Diego, Councilman Mark Quist, City of Imperial Beach, Vice Mayor Monaria, City of National City, and Supervisor Greg Cox, of course, County of San Diego and Chair of the Peshore Bikeway Working Group for 30 years. I think uh, I want to thank you all, but I, I do, uh, Supervisor Cox, want to tell you that, um, you know, I met you a few times before I came to San Diego, and I'm honored to have met you and, and know about your work and your contribution to this region is unmatched, and I, I hope you won't be far. Um, we, we, at least we know how to find you. I, I think you're, you're going to Big Bear. I have a place there, so I know exactly where you are. 
Um, but thank you for your leadership, for this working group leadership in general for the past three decades. Uh, we, you, you know, you could, I mean, I said it in your video, you, you, you couldn't ask for a better leader for, for the, the county of San Diego. And uh, we have a small thank you uh, message for uh, a proper send off. So Linda, why don't you start the video? Okay, thank you, Hassan. Uh, Supervisor uh, Cox, I just wanted to tell you uh, how grateful we are for your services uh, for uh, the County of San Diego. And uh, on behalf of Sandak 400 employees, I want to wish you the greatest retirement. And I want to tell you that uh, you're not going to be far. Uh, we're always going to be grateful for uh, your uh, marks uh, on the region and and we will invite you back to even see more of an amazing thing that sandag is going to do but just wishing you a great retirement thank you for your service and hope to see you uh, in the future a special word of thanks to my friend and colleague greg cox uh, for being the driving force behind the bayshore bikeway for decades greg your passion and your leadership has been absolutely instrumental in bringing this project to fruition. Uh, once, of course, this was just an idea. Uh, this 24-mile bikeway, it now connects the five cities around San Diego Bay, offering our residents and our visitors alike unparalleled views and sightseeing and a great safe way to exercise. I should know because I utilize it myself uh, several times a month. So on behalf of all San Diegans, Greg, thank you for your tireless dedication to seeing this project through. I'm sure we'll all see you out there on the bike soon. Congratulations. Supervisor Greg Cox, also known as Mr. Chula Vista. You are our city council person from 1976 through 1981. Then you became our mayor from 1981 to 1990. And finally, you are elected to serve us on the County Board of Supervisors from 1995 until today, 2020. Thank you so much for your decades of leadership and most importantly, your environmental stewardship for our community. Last month, our City Council unanimously approved naming the Sweetwater's Bicycle Skills Park in your honor. It is now known as the Greg Cox Park. There are so many other special places throughout our city that could have equally borne that designation. Thank you very much, Greg. Happy retirement. Greg, on the occasion of your last Bayshore Bikeway Working Group meeting, I wanted to thank you for your tireless and persistent efforts in getting the bikeway where it is today. I also want to thank you for all the other things you've done for our communities. It's been a pleasure working with you. All the best in your future endeavors. Thanks a lot, Greg. Hey, Supervisor Cox, uh, Amy Henshaw here, just wishing you a happy, healthy uh, retirement, wishing you roll on uh, to the next chapter and phase of doing great things and just enjoying life. Uh, I just want to say thanks so much for all you've done for uh, the community, uh, the bicycling community, our greater community of San Diego County, um, the Bayshore Bicycle Bikeway, forever in your legacy, and um, so much to be proud of in your in your years of service uh, here. And we couldn't we couldn't say thank you enough. We're gonna miss you, uh, but we know we'll be seeing you around. And uh, roll on. Cheers, Greg. Take care. Hi, Greg. I would like to take this first opportunity to thank you. You have championed so much for so many. No one has worked harder and your positive impact will leave a lasting legacy. I would also like to congratulate you on your much deserved retirement and in your future endeavors. I hope that includes staying active in our communities. You have been a tireless, strong leader of the Bayshore Bikeway and we are not done. Wishing you all the best on behalf of the city of National City. 
Thank you to Supervisor Cox for being a tireless champion for the completion of the Bayshore Bikeway for over three decades. We are thankful for your vision of this Class 1 bike path. Many San Diegans will benefit for years to come as they bike around San Diego Bay. Best wishes on your retirement. Supervisor Cox, on behalf of Sandag Bikeway staff, both present and past, thank you very much for your leadership, your advocacy, your professionalism, and your friendship over the last several years, not only for all things Bayshore Bikeway, but for a network of safer places to bike and walk. And this will definitely be part of your legacy, and we want you to know that we certainly appreciate your efforts. All the best in your next adventures. Thank you. Hey Greg, it's Bill. Just reaching out to say thank you for your life, which has given us ours. I'm so sad that you're leaving, Greg. And because of term limits, what's up with that? Greg, your exemplary commitment to health and family on all levels, your steadfast dedication to education and environmentally sound infrastructure, your unrelenting efforts to build and create libraries, community centers, and parks, big and small, and always for the people. You've done your job, Greg. The rest is up to us. Enjoy what comes next. Bask in the warmth, the love, the pride, and gratitude we all have for you, Greg. Thank you. Have a great forever. Get some sleep, and I'll call you tomorrow with my updated wish list of things we've still got to get done. All the best, Greg. We love you. Good and happy everything forever. I knew I was going to get all those uh, thanks and accolades. Uh, I would have retired a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> well, I just want to say congratulations, amazing career. Thank you for allowing us to say thank you. Well, Hassan and Kevin and Jill and Mike and Andy and Mona and Vivian and Linda and Bill Walton. Uh, what a, what a, what a, Great tribute, and I sincerely thank you for that. That uh, was very kind and very much appreciated. Thank you. And I certainly want to extend my uh, thanks to uh, uh, the folks that have served on, on the Bayshore Bikeway Working Group over the years. I mean, we've had people come in and go out and come back, and, and uh, it's been great to see the consistency, though, of, of focus on trying to get the Bayshore Bikeway had done around San Diego Bay. And as I say, we're we're gonna get there in the next three to five years, right, Hassan? I mean, the, Absolutely. the money's there. No, no question about that. Uh, and, we, just, uh, we just make sure we get the money um, in a couple of years, right? Yeah, well, we'll get there, but- uh, Absolutely. I wanna acknowledge uh, again that uh, uh, Mona Rios has been a part of this committee for a good number of years now. And, and obviously Marcus is gonna be picking up the the charge from uh, National City's perspective. And then uh, Matthew, we're looking forward to you and, and the great leadership in Imperial Beach. Uh, Duki Valderrama, I see him coming on now. He's uh, finishing up his, his uh, tenure on the, the Board of Port Commissioners. And uh, I don't know whether they've selected anybody yet to replace you, Duki. You're, you're really irreplaceable, but uh, uh, if, the, if do you have anything to announce in regards to that, is that something that the new chair will will uh, deal with? Yeah, no, the uh, city council has uh, uh, selected Sandy Naranjo to uh, take my position. Uh, she'll be coming in on the first uh, first meeting in January. So uh, this is my farewell meeting with you also. So I was not able to do a video for you because I have so I've uh, that's the only reason I didn't do a video, but I really wanted to thank you for all your services. We would not be where we're at out all your leadership and everything that you've done. Uh, so thank you very much for, for everything that you've done for the Bayshore uh, Bikeway Committee. Thank wow. you. Thank you, Dickey. Uh And will they make the, the Port Commission will make the, the assignments for the your uh, replacement here in January? Yeah, uh, 
yeah, Commissioner, uh, Chairman-elect uh, Michael Zuckett will make all the new appointments when, he, uh, and that, that should be coming up very quickly. Great. Well, Duke, Dukey, thank you for your leadership. You've been a, a great participant and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see you out there on the, on the Bayshore bikeway riding around and trying to catch up with Bill Walton. There you go. Appreciate it. Well, thank you all for the, the recognition for all of our uh, outgoing uh, uh, board members. And uh, if uh, there's nothing else to deal with, uh, item one, we'll go to item two, which is the approval Chair, of the minutes. Yes. Chair, this is Mona Rios. I, I don't plan to stay for the entire meeting. As you just mentioned, I um, have, have uh, uh, well, we have a new member who will be serving as the National City's representative. And I just wanted to introduce him to folks. He is a brand new council member in National City, but he's been in National City a long time. I know most of you know him. He served as a Sandag staffer, the youngest chair of our planning commission, and has a career in urban planning, a master's in a real estate, and has um, has also been working uh, in the past with President Gomez. So he's definitely not new to uh, all of the work that we do. And most importantly, uh, he is an avid cyclist with his family and knows our Bayshore bike, uh, bikeway paths very, very well. So I'm really happy to have uh, Marcus serve in this position and I know you're in good hands. Great, thank you, Mona. Again, thank you for your participation in the Bayshore Bikeway Working Group all these years, appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now. Um, okay, we'll go to the approval of the minutes for the meeting of October 9th. Is there any additions or corrections? Move approval. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion by uh, member Wywoody and seconded by member Valderrama. If there's no further discussion, Linda, would you go ahead and call the roll? Yes. Um, Councilmember Galvez, City of Chula Vista. Uh, aye. Councilmember Donovan Coronado. Yes. Councilmember Leba Gonzalez, Imperial Beach. Aye. Councilmember Bush, City of National City. I'm abstaining since I was near at that last meeting. Correct. Uh, Councilmember Moreno, San Diego. Chair Cox, County of San Diego. Aye. aye. Andy Hanshaw, Bicycle Coalition. Aye. Commissioner Valderrama, Port of San Diego. Aye. Mr. Wywoody, public member. Aye. Thank you, Chair. That motion passes. Very good. Um, the next item on our agenda is public comments and communications. This would be for members of the public to speak on items which are not on today's agenda. Uh, Linda, do you want to, you know, maybe I should have done this at the very beginning, but do you want to go ahead and, and basically explain what the process is for public comments and for uh, uh, any other directions we need to have for this meeting? Yes, of course. Um, all I really need to do is if you would like to make a public comment, just um, raise your hand, use that hand tool, and then I'll be monitoring the attendee list um, and calling those out to the chair. Okay. And, um, Chair, I see no hands raised at this time. I'm, I'm, I'm raising mine. Okay, Andy. <laughs> it's, it's a real hand. Um, well, I just wanted to, um, as the, the non-city representative, and I've heard from several folks uh, of a pretty good idea that I would like to support and bring forward to this group uh, to uh, pursue uh, naming the Bayshore Bikeway. Uh, after uh, Chairman Cox, and um, you know, I think it's it's synonymous with Greg Cox, and uh, 30 years of work and service uh, would be a fitting uh, tribute. And um, so, I wanted to bring this up as um, a member of this committee, and with your blessing uh, from other members um, and support, I would uh, pursue it logistically with. Um, city contacts uh, of the five cities uh, on the process side of things. So we think it's a great thing and, and I hope you do too. Wow, uh, I'm, I guess I'm speechless. <laughs> um, from a procedural standpoint, I don't think you can 
vote on it since it's not on the agenda. Right, right. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys figure it out Chair later, Cox, I guess. Can, can we take that as a consensus item to discuss at the next meeting? Uh, certainly. I, I, I will support um, putting that on our next agenda. Okay. Again, I don't. I don't think we can vote on it, but uh, yeah, do great. Yeah, uh, from a procedural standpoint, I, I fully support the idea. The question I have is, from a procedural standpoint, is the uh, is the committee have the power to go ahead and make that change, or is there other positions that have to be uh, uh, get approval from? Might might I suggest that maybe based on the comments that that. I'd be referred to staff to kind of research what, you know, what needs to be done. And if, uh, if you want to bring it back at a subsequent meeting, you can, you can certainly coordinate that with, uh, with Linda. Uh, Definitely can do that. So I'll, I'll make that request if we can bring this forward to the next agenda. <clears throat> okay. Greg, I got to be off for a couple of minutes. I've got a, a plumber here for uh, some plumbing work, but I'll, I'll be right back. All right. Take Chair care Cox, of those plumbing problems. <laughs> Chair Cox, we do have one hand raised. Okay. Mr. Bart, we'll go ahead and allow you to talk. Go ahead, please. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairman Cox. This is Dennis Dubard from General Dynamics and ASCO. I just, uh, I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to, if I'll see you before you leave, but I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you on behalf of the over 3,000 men and women at General Dynamics and ASCO for all the work that you've done. Uh, in the South Bay and around the county, it's been tremendous, and I just wanted to wish you well and in, in, in your retirement. And uh, you're a class act, and uh, you're, you've done a great job. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. So that's a lot. Dennis, thank you very much, and I I can't thank you enough for for the cooperation we've had from NASCO. I know this has been kind of a, a difficult issue sometimes, but I mean having partners like like NASCO and, and the Navy and SDG&E and all the people that have contributed over the years uh, to the uh, helping to realize the goal of completing the Bayshore Bikeway has just truly really been amazing. So uh, Dennis, thank you for your very kind comments. My pleasure, thank you. Okay, anything else on public comments? Chair, I see no other hands raised. Okay, then uh, let's go to the next item on the agenda, which is item number four, the Bayshore Bikeway Working Group Charter. Yes, good morning again, everyone, uh, members of the working group. Uh, this is item four, uh, so recent um, changes uh, necessitate changing the working group charter. Uh, all of our Sandag working groups have um, have group charters. Um, the last update uh, to the working group charter was in 2017. Um, and so uh, there's an attachment one to item four that gives you the track change version. Um, there are basically a couple of changes here to point you to. Um, one under the membership, the suggestion from staff to add uh, up to two public members if the committee would so desire to in the future. Um, and secondly, is just updating the selection of the chair um, and vice chair section. So um, making that just a uh, selection of both of those positions up to the working group. And then um, all of our charter changes go to our Sandag Transportation Committee. And so just schedule wise and, and sort of logistics wise, um, pending a recommendation from you today, uh, then we would plan to take this to the Transportation Committee at their January meeting. And then we could return to the next working group meeting to select a chair and a vice chair pending the working group's comments. So um, we can appoint a temporary chair ahead of the next meeting to actually open the meeting and, and run that uh, nomination process and that kind of thing. And, and um, so I've consulted that with the legal experts and I think we're fine. I, um, by the way, am stuck in 2020. So um, I mean to correct the staff report that it would be January, 2021, going to transportation committee, not 20. I don't know why I wanna stay in this year. Um, and then at your first meeting in 2021. So I did wanna update the staff uh, report. And with that, I'm happy to, to open up any comments or questions that you have for me. Okay, are there comments or questions? If not, is there a desire to move forward with this and make this as a recommendation to the uh, Transportation Committee? I guess that would be the 
the place where this would go? Correct. I'll move to approve item number four. Okay. I'll second. Okay, we have a, a, a motion by member Bush, seconded by member Galvez. Any further discussion? Okay, Linda, would you go ahead and call the roll? Certainly. Council member Galvez, Chula Vista. Aye. Council member Donovan Coronado. Yes. Council member Leba Gonzalez, uh, Imperial Beach. Aye. Council member Bush, National City. Yes. Council member Moreno, San Diego. Chair Cox, County. Aye. Uh, Mr. Hanshaw, Bicycle Coalition. Aye. Commissioner Valderrama, Port. He's got a plumbing problem. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wywoody. Hi. Chair, that motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item number five, which is the Troyes Creek Bikeway status report. Um, I know that uh, last night that there was a meeting of the Logan, Barrio Logan uh, uh, planning group where they were talking about their um, uh, mobility uh, plan update. And I think uh, Everett is, uh, Everett Hauser from the city of San Diego is gonna give us uh, an update on in regards to what happened at that meeting and some of the ramifications it may have for the Choyas Creek uh, bikeway connection to the Bayshore bikeway. So Everett, are you gonna, Linda, do you need some introductory yes, yes. comments or? Uh, no, I think I think I'm good. Thank you, Chair okay. Cox, and uh, good morning, members of the working group. Uh, as described, and uh, as at your last meeting, I provided an update on the City of San Diego project, the Choice Creek to Bayshore Bikeway. And uh, as mentioned last night, we brought uh, some of the alternatives to the Barrio Logan Community Planning Group, which is working with our planning department for a community plan update. And last night was a, an exploration of some of the mobility options going into that community plan update. And we are included uh, descriptions of the uh, possible routes for the Choice Creek to Bayshore Bikeway project, uh, presented those to the community group. Also, uh, as Vicki has pointed out, the Choice Creek Coalition presented their uh, project, which you also saw last month with this group, which includes uh, some alternative alignments, uh, totaling three to connect Torius Creek to the Bayshore Bikeway. And so the group's recommendation was to carry those forward into their mobility analysis. And so we'll continue to work with uh, staff, technical consultants, and the public and interested members uh, as we explore those concepts through the community plan update. Okay, any, uh, any questions of Everett? I know that uh, we don't have it on the, the agenda, but uh, I know that uh, uh, Vicki Estrada and perhaps others from the Groundworks, I think were tied into that meeting last night. I don't know whether any of them, uh, Leslie Reynolds uh, or Vicki, have any additional comments they want to make if they're on? Yes, Chair. Um, one hand raised. Um, oh, Vicki, okay. Um, Vicki Estrada, I unmuted you. Yes, thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Yes? Yeah. Perfect. Yes. No, thank you, Everett. That was a good brief summary. And uh, obviously we have some issues that we have to work out with the Navy because that's probably the, uh, the you know, how we get from uh, the actual bikeway to the north. There's this number of different options. I presented an alternative uh, route to um, uh, route number three we call that alternative C, which actually may work. I got a text this morning from, uh, from David Zajac saying that uh, uh, he wants to work with, with us and, and, and potentially see if we can't work out a solution. So I was pleased to hear that the planning group last night actually uh, voted to have the city look at all three options and not throw them out right now because it really does make sense to look at other alternatives. So very, very happy that you guys are going forward, Everett, um, to, to study those. So, so with that, uh, uh, Chairman Cox, I'm, um, I'm, I don't have really anything else to say other than like everybody else, thank you for all your work on this, but 
uh, we really, really think that uh, there's some options in addition to uh, Main Street that can make it safer for the bicyclists to connect to the bikeway. Thank you. Um, Everett and, and Vicki, I know that there's uh, been some discussions about trying to break that project into maybe two, two phases, given the fact that uh, uh, the one that would go underneath the freeway and probably through the Navy property is probably going to be a little bit more complex and certainly more expensive. Is there any indication that maybe that might be a, an approach to break it into to two different projects? Uh, yeah, we certainly kept that in mind. Uh, if we come to that point that it's determined that it would be more practical to break it up into a couple different phases, that would allow us to move ahead with the one and then continue to work out solutions. But at, as, as in this stage we're at, we wanna continue to work with Navy and Vicky and community on, on trying to be able to package up uh, one big project as much as we can to be efficient. Any, any questions of Everett or Vicki? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, item number six, which is the Barrio Logan segment status report. And Chris Chair, uh, Carteret. Chair yes. Cox, excuse me. Um, I do have a hand raised from Dave Sajak who would like to talk on this item before we move on. Okay, sure. Go ahead, Dave. Great, good morning. Uh, am I live? Yes, you are. Hey, good morning, Chair Cox, working group. Uh, happy Thursday morning. Yes, uh, it was a wonderful presentation that Vicki gave last night. And I know that we're in coordination with Everett and the city and um, the Choyas Creek team to look at all three options and keep our, keep our minds open and focus on active transportation. But uh, just wanted to highlight that, you know, one of the key critical components in the area is for the community supporting the Hall Road and really allowing for trucks to have efficient and smooth options to get up and out of the working waterfront and on to support the economy. So with that, there's some, some like you mentioned, Chair Cox, there's some challenges. Uh, but I think, you know, through the design process, we can keep an open mind and work through them. And uh, we look forward to working with Vicki and the city team and, and others to, to find wonderful, innovative solutions to support active transportation. Thank you. Great. Thanks, David. Appreciate uh, your input. That's great. Anything else on this item? Okay, we'll move on to the Barrio Logan uh, segment status report. And Chris Cargaret from San Diego is going to give us that report. Okay, just uh, getting my screen share working there. Is, is that working for everybody? Yeah, I think so. Okay, because it disappeared for me except on my secondary screen. All right. Um, good morning. Chris Carter Ed here, Sandag Project Manager for Bayshore Bikeway Barrio Logan segment. Um, thank you to the Citizens Working Group members and Honorable Chair for having me here to present today and welcome and congratulations to new members. And thank you so much to Supervisor Cox for his decades of service and unwavering support, which will continue past today as I, I know um, he is offered and we will be accepting um, some assistance from him in terms of nudging uh, partners uh, to, you know, to help us move the project forward. Anyways, um, I'll be giving an update um, on the project's progress regarding design, right-of-way, funding, and schedule. Uh, jumping into design, we're still in final design toward the end of that phase, leading to being able to bid out the project, but we still are receiving new uh, late-in-the-game design issues uh, raised by city development services reviewers about items that we thought were accepted and so that uh, requires uh, more time to deal with. Uh, we also have design matters that we can't address until we have complete feedback from SDG&E. Uh, we hope to have this resolved early in the next year um, and one more final round of review with uh, development services. And then further, we do have some design matters hanging in the balance relating to the project's uh, proximity and interaction with active rail and the California Public Utilities Commission oversight. 
Uh, right of way continues to be very challenging uh, with moving pieces that are difficult to get into place and to get to stay in place. Um, all parties are present and cooperative. Uh, it's just work that's underpinned by some of the most arduous bureaucratic processes known to humanity. Uh, this statement doesn't apply to the Navy as they haven't had the opportunity to jump in yet. Uh, once they have, I'll provide feedback to the group and a Yelp review. Um, their right of way work is dependent on SDG and E determining the layout of project related utility relocations on Navy property. And, uh, and Dave and his colleagues have have promised us um, really quick turnaround on on their work and I, I know they'll come through on that uh, when we tap them to jump in. So thank you. Uh, and, and I would like to say that despite the, um, you know, the difficulties that we have uh, with development services, we, we do have uh, partners at the city, uh, such as Everett, that are also unwavering in their support and efforts to try to uh, smooth the way and, and get everything squared away as reasonably as possible. Uh, Moving on to funding, uh, just a quick review. We have substantial uh, transnet uh, funds invested in the project and lined up to be spent on construction, but also uh, almost $5 million of funding from uh, SB1, uh, Active Transportation Program funding, uh, the Coastal Conservancy and Chair Cox's district amounting to over uh, $28 million. Uh, the SB1 ATP funding deadline is at the end of January next year, and we have applied for an extension and we're uh, relying on receiving it in order to deliver the project. Um, the extension, if granted, will just barely cover the additional delays uh, that we've experienced, so it's really critical. Um, and uh, last but not least, we have our current most ambitious best case scenario schedule. Uh, I hope to be able to deliver based on this, but uh, the design approval and right of way issues that I mentioned, you know, are, are you know, a real uh, risk and um, it won't be surprising if we see some slippage. And uh, that's the end of my formal presentation and I'm prepared to uh, answer any questions that people may have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. I guess uh, if we maintain that schedule, uh, starting the construction in August of next year, it would be right in time for Andy's uh, Bike the Bay. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we can work around that. Yeah. yeah I'll just... uh, any, uh, any questions or comments from, uh, from board members? Uh, Chair, I have a question. Dukey here. Yeah, Dukey, go ahead. Yeah. Under the budget, it said 28 million. Is that allocated just for this second portion or, or can I get some clarification on that? That That's the uh, the total cost of delivering this segment. Segment. So that's uh, soft costs, construction management and uh, hard construction costs. And do we have that amount allocated or available to us? We do. Got it, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate the clarification. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Okay, other questions, comments? Chair, I see no uh, public hands raised for this. Okay. Item. I mean, this is really encouraging on two fronts. Number one, to, to know that we've got the money to build it. And I, I know that we've still got some issues to work out with uh, SDG and E and, and uh, uh, Navy, I think, has been very cooperative along the, the way, along with uh, NASCO. Do we have any remaining issues with Burlington Northern Santa Fe in this segment? Um, no, actually, they're waiting on us for some response to some legal comments, and they should be uh, providing back to us uh, forthwith some materials we're counting on. Um, they're they're present and uh, the representative is is helpful. Um, you know, it's we we are trying to avoid uh, doing more than is warranted by the project in terms of uh, rail crossing improvements, and so that's probably our biggest challenge there. 
um, but we're still kind of uh, waiting to see where that falls in regard to CPUC, uh, the Public Utilities Commission, who's really the ultimate uh, arbiter in that. So we, we should be seeing results uh, in the next two months in terms of how that's all gonna shake out. I'm sorry, I think you're muted, Chairman. Oh, thank you. Yep. Uh, have we got things worked out with sdg &E in regards to the relocation of the uh, utility pole to allow for that second right turn lane into the uh, naval base? Uh, no, sir, we have not. Well, I'll be glad to help you in the next two and a half weeks to see if we can get that resolved. Thank you, I'll be pleased to have that assistance. Chair, we do uh, have um, one public member Speaking, okay. Uh, Dave Sajak, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Yes, uh, Chair Cox, just to support Chris, I know you just mentioned it, so it's just timely. If you could assist, it'd be appreciated. I know from uh, my experience in, in the Navy, this is one of those things. We just lost you, Dave. Oh, that was my bad. Sorry, Dave. Okay. All right. Am I live? Okay. You're live. Go ahead. All right. Uh, Chair Cox, I'd just like to say, I, I know Chris Chris, and yourself just mentioned it, but this is uh, from Navy experience. That sdg &E poll uh, needs some leadership. Uh, TLC run up the flagpole so that uh, the project team can continue to move forward. And, and really, the Navy's kind of stuck until sdg and &E. It's a critical path method item. So... We would appreciate it. Thank you. If we, can get S, if we can get SDG and E to relocate the pole, do we have the funding to, to do the uh, second right turn lane in for the Navy? Is that a part of the 28 million? Uh, it would actually be additional funding that we would have to secure to, to do that. Okay. All right, Jill. Sure, yes. Ahead. May I sit on, on the meetings with SDG and E, or should we um, consider a subcommittee that specifically works through this issue? Um, I tell you what, I've been talking with Pedro Viegas, and let me let me talk with him. He was the one that was trying to uh, um, ease this through the SDG and E bureaucracy. And if if that doesn't work, then I think maybe at the next meeting, maybe it would be appropriate to do that. Thank you. Thanks, so. Any other comments? If not, we'll move on to item number seven, which is the 8B segment status report. This is a segment that's down uh, starting at Palomar Street in Chula Vista, going down to the Salt Works. And I'm not sure what additional information we have, but Omar is going to fill us in on that. Thank you, Chair Cox. Um, yeah, like you said, not too much to update. We are uh, still working on um, negotiating agreements with the property owners. Um, these easements are really necessary for the construction of the project. Um, we've kind of gone back and forth. We've engaged um, the city of San Diego because they would be uh, ultimately assuming maintenance responsibilities and MTS as well, who also has some vested interest in some of the properties in the area. Um, but unfortunately, we don't uh, have an agreement yet and, and really um, the project is, the design's on hold until we can secure those agreements. Thank okay, you. Okay, any uh, questions? Yeah. Jill, go ahead. Thank you, Chair Cox. Thank you, Omar. Um, so have all property lines and ownership and everything uh, been sorted out down there? Um, yeah, I, there's, I mean, I, I kind of hesitate because there there is one property that is under dispute. Um, the Gabays are the property owners uh, for Saltworks and, and they seem to believe that, that they own a property um, but you know, we believe that MTS was actually deeded, the MTS predecessor was deeded that property first. Um, but nonetheless, we're, we're trying to work out just uh, an agreement uh, you know, to, to basically get the easements to construct on their property. And unfortunately, it's just, we haven't been able to come to terms yet. Okay, any other questions? Question on the same issue that uh, Jill uh, just raised, is that, something that you think can be resolved through negotiation or does it or do you feel that it's going to end up having to get litigated um you know litigation would be quite expensive it's a really small segment it's 0.4 miles 
you know, even uh, using uh, eminent domain or, or anything like that, I don't know that our board's going to support that. Um, you know, all those measures would cost a lot of money. And, um, you know, I think we're a little reluctant to, to go down those routes. So, um, so I would, I would probably say that we, I doubt that we would go through litigation. We're hoping to get an agreement amongst all the parties, you know, working with our attorneys, but fortunately it's just, it hasn't, hasn't come to, you know, hasn't happened yet. Dukey, I will say that uh, Mr. Gabay was very, very helpful in the segment going from 13th Street and Imperial Beach over to Swiss Park. Uh, he gave us a, a revocable license to use his property, uh, which, you know, maybe there's an element of risk, but uh, there's not anything he could do with, with uh, that property anyway. So uh, we've been pursuing with him a revocable license to use to see if we could get MTS and Mr. Gabay to, to give us that revocable license to use the, the area between the railroad tracks and the drainage, which is really the disputed property in regards to is it owned by MTS or is it owned by, by Mr. Gabay. Uh, and I think they, they came to uh, a willingness to consider that, both parties. Uh, but I think now uh, Mr. Gabay has some plans that he submitted to the city of San Diego that uh, he is asking them to review. And some of that property is actually in the city of Chula Vista too. So I think some of those issues are kind of getting muddled into the bikeway, but we hope to be able to see if we can't unmuddle muddle it and uh, uh, you know, hopefully get some closure on this so we can at least get moving on that, that segment to the, at least the salt works. And then the last segment, segment would be from the salt works to tie into the Bayshore bikeway. Mr. Gabay has indicated a willingness to basically include and build uh, that portion of the bikeway uh, contingent upon his ability to go ahead and develop the, the, the balance of the property that he has down there. And I think that's something he's negotiating with the city of San Diego on right now. I appreciate the update because I know you've been working with them and I thought we were making progress with them and then all of a sudden we're still dealing with it. So I just was trying to get an idea of what, what the issue was. So I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. Yeah, well, you, you're right. Uh, this has been going on for about three years now, trying to get this one little segment done. But, you know, hopefully we'll we'll get some answers fairly soon. Thank you. Anything else on this segment? Then let's move on to the border to Bayshore Bikeway status report. And Chris Romano from San Diego is going to give us that report. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Chris Romano. My pronouns are he and him. And um, I have not been to this group yet, I believe. Um, I've taken over this project from Allison Moss, who was the previous project manager. So good to meet all of you. Um, and I have a presentation I'm going to pull up. All right, how does this look? Can everyone see it? Yes, I think. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. So um, just a, it's, this is gonna be a really quick um, update on the border to Bayshore bikeway. Um, but um, I believe most of you are familiar, but as a quick background, it's a six and a half mile urban bikeway running from um, the San Ysidro port of entry uh, to, the, to the Bayshore bikeway. Um, on 13th Street in Imperial Beach. And um, it's going to provide access to many of the destinations in between. It was designed specifically to connect to lots of schools and parks and different kinds of community destinations. So it's a really great project. Um, but as far as um, where we're at in the project, we're kind of just still working through a lot of the review process. Um, we did submit 100% plans to the partner agencies last April. And so we've been going through the review cycles with them and we anticipate that we will be, we're pretty close to sign off. Um, we've also been coordinating with a number of partner agencies. Um, one of those is scg and &E, where we believe we've addressed pretty much any issues that they had. Um, and then the other major coordination we've been doing is regarding the railroad crossings. Um, there are three of them and we've been coordinating with MTS, CPUC, Caltrans and the city of San Diego um, at Dairy Mart Road at East and West Park Avenue and at Smythe Ave, which is more of a, that one is more of a city of San Diego led effort that we're just supporting. Um, so we're hoping that coordination wraps up pretty soon as well. 
Um, we're still on track uh, at, on the same schedule that we have shown you before, which is being ready to advertise in mid next year and then starting construction in early 2022 with open to public in mid 2025. And that's all I've got. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, are there any questions? Yeah. Any, any hands, Linda? Chair, I see no public comment on this item. Okay, then let's go to item number nine, which is the base or bikeway signage improvement pro project. So we've got a couple of uh, items uh, on that, starting with the etiquette uh, signage. Super, um, yeah. Supervisor Cox. Um, yes, go ahead, Matthew. Pr prior to you moving on, is it possible that I can um, acquire some of the additional information from Chris? Could you possibly email it to me or send it? Because this is the project that is going right down 13th crossing Imperial Beach Boulevard. And I would just like some additional information for my sake, please. Very good. I, Chris, you can take care of that. Yeah, I'm happy to send you over. Um, I'll start with the fact sheet and then I can answer any other questions after that. Okay, great. I'll, I'll, um, I'll send you my email. Should I just put it in the chat or? Council member, I can provide Chris with your contact info, no problem. Oh, great, thank you very much. Yeah, thank no you. worries. Thank you very much, everyone. You know, something else that is not, well, it's it's related to this particular segment because uh, the County of San Diego was able to secure a, a $346,000 grant from the Coastal Conservancy, I think it was in September, to come up with an alignment for the California Coastal Trail which uh, California Coastal Trail is the Bayshore Bikeway, at least in the southern part of the county. And then it ties into the uh, Coastal Rail Trail and heads up through Carlsbad and Oceanside. And then uh, we got to work on the link through Camp Pendleton. But uh, the $346,000 grant from the Coastal Conservancy will look at alternative alignments from 13th Street and Imperial Beach uh, down through uh, the Tijuana River Valley, and then tying into the um, the campground that's under construction off of Monument Road, and then ultimately into Borderfield State Park. And uh, obviously, there's going to be some overlap, I think, in regards to the uh, uh, border to Bayshore Bikeway uh, alignment. But uh, um, you know, the Coastal Conservancy's funding will will give the county some money to go ahead and bring in some consultants to start working on that segment also. So. All these things are beginning to kind of tie together with uh, Choyas Creek and uh, and the border to to uh, Bayshore uh, connections, and then on up to the border for the state park. So it's kind of exciting. Hey, if there's no other comments or questions on that item, we'll move on to the Bayshore Bikeway etiquette signage. And the first part of this is going to be presented by Howard Lee from the City of Coronado on some of the signage for segments 10A and 10B. Hello, Chair Cox and uh, working group, and and uh, just wanted to say um, this is a continuation from our item uh, as discussed at our last Bayshore Bikeway working group, and want to share about the um, the concepts that our local community uh, mobility commission had come up with. They worked really hard on putting together a series of slides and imagery to uh, kind of refine the concepts and to ident identify the content and the placement of the signs and um, and how they wanted to improve um, etiquette and behavior al along, the, our, um, our, along our bikeway in Coronado, including segments 10A and 10B. So you, I'm sure you all know about the, the bikeway in Coronado uh, along the shoreline promenade, which is along the bayfront, and then um, the strand segment as well. So I'll focus on the promenade first. Um, we're, uh, we're proposing stencil signage along the bikeway, not pull signs or to um, just to limit the the um, the imagery and um, just keep it um, focused on on the bikeway itself and and on the ground, so then it, it doesn't distract from the the views that we have. And it's for the purpose of promoting safety and courteous behavior. Courteous behavior, as we you know, there's a wide range of users along the bikeway. You know, from walkers to joggers to cyclists to um, to scooters, skateboards, from from young to old. Um, small groups to individuals to 
So the surveys, tourists, visitors. So there's a wide range of users along the bikeway. And, and along the way, you know, people just need to be made, made aware to be more courtesy, cur courteous to each other and to look out for one another. So um, we're looking at stencil signage um, to alert users to be safe and looking for placements so that, that, uh, along the bike way um, so that you know, people can actually see it and it's legible and um, it makes people more aware of their surroundings. We wanna keep to, to the, aesthetic, the aesthetics and the character of our bike way and not you know, add clutter. Uh, we're looking to apply um, stenciling along both travel lanes, obviously, and north, northbound and southbound, and um, from the Thailand's area all the way up to the ferry pier um, along the beach area there, and um, adding southbound signage to be offset by 250 feet to reduce clutter. And um, we're looking at a total of 28 stencil signs. Um, we're at also looking to add um, you know, a look both ways signage along, um, for example, around the playground area at Thailand's park. So then, you know, kids and the youth can kind of look out when they're crossing the path or running into the path. And um, so then uh, we could reduce any potential hazards there. Uh, we're looking at um, travel on the right type signage. This signage is inspired by uh, Marin County's Share the Path campaign. So we've, we, uh, the Mobility Commission has taken from their signage and kind of incorporated it into this proposed signage here. It doesn't necessarily have to follow this concept, but they want to use it as a, as a good example that's worked in other places. So this is um, that, an example of that signage here. Um, early alert striping. So um, we're looking at um, adding this, this striping, kind of like rumble strips for cyclists as they enter in from Glorietta into Thailand's park to make them aware that there's an increased amount of users along the promenade. And um, so it'll help to make people aware to slow down traffic along the bikeway. Um, so this is kind of an example of what it could look like uh, with the yellow striping and, as, and some language along the path entering congested area, observe rules of the road, all world users should reduce speed to 10 miles an hour. So uh, this following imagery, I'm just gonna cycle through really quickly just to give you an idea of visually where um, the Mobility Commission was proposing to place the, the signage. So along the playground area, yeah, 10 miles an hour, and then north boundary of the playing fields, look both ways, you know, limit your speeds, look out for each other. Marriott area, rental pair, then the North Lawn. I'm sure you've all walked or biked this, this stretch, so you kind of know this space, can have an idea of what it looks like on the ground. Yeah, I'm just cycling through, and then there here's the El Fornio area with the mini beaches, um, you know, both ways. So it's for, for the purpose of just in, improving etiquette, improving um, courtesy along the path. And along the strands, stretch or we're also looking for um, iconic signage there too. Um, yield signage lo along the path that's stenciled um, at uh, intersections. There's about 40 yield stencil signage that would be needed at uh, intersections along the strand. And um, travel to your right every 1,000 feet. And um, all users pass on the left, you know, announce your passing as well. You know. So we're, we're looking to work with the port. I've been working with the port and also with the working group and also Standag staff to get your, your feedback, to get better idea of, you know, the, the aesthetics, how it looks, you know, if there's certain priorities you want to make us aware of, let us know. Uh, we're looking to refine the de design concepts and finalize it so then we could apply the stenciling in the first quarter of next year. That concludes my presentation. Great. Any questions uh, for Howard? Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, how, how to see you. Long time to see. Good to see you again. Thank you for all your work on this. Um, so it looks like it, this is a mix of uh, signs that are mounted on poles and then some that are stenciled onto the street on the sidewalk, right? It'll be all stenciled, no poles. Got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that was my question. Thank you. Hey, uh, Jill? Thank you so much. Yes, I, so you mentioned bonded stencils. Um, it's been our experience in Chula Vista now, we're using um, that melted plastic uh, and it, it provides not only a more durable surface, especially when sand is involved and 
the yes. conditions of the sun and a lot of usage, but is that what you're considering? Not paint, bonded paint, but actually melted plastic? Because it kind of gives a little bit of a raise um, in, in the texture, which also is another visual cue, especially with glare. And for those that, you know, um, have a little more trouble with, with, with sight. That's exactly right. That's, that's exactly the type of um, um, stenciling the Mobility Commission was suggesting. And that's what we're looking at. There's a range of different applications and that's definitely one of them that we're, we're, we're considering. That'd be great. Thanks. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Okay. Chair Cox, I don't see any hands raised for a public comment on this item. Okay. If there's nothing further on that item, we'll go to the second part of uh, item nine, which is the wayfinding signage. And uh, Sydney and, and Natalie are going to give us a report on that from Sandag. Hi. Yes. Let me just share my screen here. All right, so, um, hi, I'm Signe Wirtz, a public outreach intern at Sandag. I'm gonna give a brief update on the Gordy Shields bridge signage, additional wayfinding signage, and you are here map signage. These projects are funded thanks to a County of San Diego Neighborhood Reinvestment Program grant. So first we have, we recently completed the fabrication and installation of the new Gordy Shields bridge signs on the north and south sides of the bridge. We work together with Victoria and Andy from the San Diego National Wildlife Refuge. Um, so here are the before and after photos from the north side of the bridge. And here are the before and after photos from the south side of the bridge. We're also working on some additional wayfinding signage pointing to destinations along the bikeway. Here are the proposed locations and destinations. These signs will be in our regular Sandag Go By Bike visual branding with Go By Bike logo discs underneath. Um, we are also developing some You Are Here map signage around the entire bikeway to show the context of the bikeway and improve wayfinding. Here's a draft of the map signage that we are currently working on, incorporating feedback from the cities of San Diego, National City, Chula Vista, Imperial Beach, and Coronado. We hope to get the You Are Here map signage as well as the additional wayfinding signage fabricated and installed early next year. Natalie and I are happy to take any questions or suggestions on the wayfinding signage at this time. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions of Sydney or Natalie? Very nice. I wanna thank uh, Vicki Touchstone. I think she's, I think I saw her on the, the call here, but uh, I wanna thank Vicki for her help and coordination on all of this. Uh, and Vicki, I don't know whether you wanna say anything or not, but uh, if you do, here's your chance. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Um, I wanted to thank Sandag for helping us with this project and to recognize um, Artifact Design who helped us with the sign and Gordy's family was involved in um, helping us with the language. So thanks very much. Thank you. Great. Uh, I know Stefan Vance was uh, really uh, instrumental in getting the ball rolling on all of this. So I want to thank uh, Stefan for his efforts in that. Yes, and he helped us too, so he does deserve that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Chair, I don't okay. see any additional hands raised for a public comment on this item. All right, we'll move on to item number 10 then, which is updates on projects related to the Bayshore Bikeway. Uh, I don't know whether any of the members have any uh, comments they want to make or issues or concerns you have. If you do, now's the time to bring them up. Wow, everybody's happy. Marcus, go ahead. Yeah, sure. I just um, is this uh, chair? Is this an appropriate time to just uh, give some quick remarks and introduce myself, or is that towards more towards the end? Yeah, absolutely, go ahead. Okay, well, so I just um, just wanted to um, thank everyone. Um, really excited for this opportunity to serve, but really a uh, big thanks to Chair Cox for his decades of service um, in in the South County, but especially uh, over the past several years on on Bayshore Bikeway Committee. It wouldn't be where uh, we wouldn't be where we are without your service, without your hard work, and securing those resources. So, really want to thank you. Also, want to honor and thank uh, our outgoing uh, members, including uh, uh, Port Commissioner Duki uh, Valderrama 
and uh, Council Member uh, Rios, uh, both of whom have uh, really mentored and gave a lot of love and have mentored me over the years. So really want to thank them for their hard work and, and years of service. And um, yeah, so I'm just really excited about the progress of the Bayshore Bikeway and uh, just the uh, just looking forward to, to the future. Um, as you all know, this isn't, uh, and, and for me personally, this isn't just about uh, biking for recreation, which is really important. I've taken my kids around the whole the whole loop, including the ferry, and it's not just about that. It's um, or the even the tourist economic benefits. But you know, for me, this is also uh, a big solution in terms of um, addressing the global climate crisis. And um, it's really uh, biking, active transportation is really one of the most effective ways to reduce vehicle miles traveled, uh, and so that we can offer you know a, a safe alternative uh, to driving for a commute and. Uh, reduce those tailpipe emissions and, and and also traffic congestion on our, our freeways. So I'm, I'm really excited to uh, and looking forward to working with you all um, here. Uh, and there's still obviously improvements uh, to make on uh, different segments in my city and other cities like uh, Coronado and others. Um, and just there's there's so much opportunity for growth too and, and development around um, the, our, our bay and around the, the route. Um, really excited. Uh, to work with uh, Chula Vista with Council Member uh, Galvez. There's so much bayfront development going on. And I know that's still under construction and under planning, but th that's gonna be huge uh, development for all of us in, in the region. So really excited about that. Imperial Beach, done some great work. Uh, Council Member Alejandro Gonzalez, uh, they have, you know, you, you all have your, your the bike village. I'm really excited. Uh, I know COVID has kind of put a stop to a lot of that, but I'm really excited about, about that. And then uh, Barrio Logan has more housing and development. So just the future is bright for all of us. And I'm just uh, really looking forward to working hard to secure the resources to help uh, finish this up and make it happen. So thank you all. Great, good comments. Uh, let me ask uh, Councilwoman Galvez. I know that uh, construction has been going on on the, uh, on the, uh, um, RV park and the, the Sweetwater River bikeway section that goes by the uh, RV park and ties in, I think, over by Lagoon Drive. Uh, yes. any, any update on that and where we are? Thank you, um, Chair Cutts. We're hoping that it's opening. We don't have a date yet, um, but it, uh, we believe the Sweetwater segment opens in January. Isn't that correct, Dookie? Um, I haven't gotten a date yet, but but you can yeah. see it, <laughs> you can see it driving by. Um, it it kind of winds down um, through the, what, the Sweetwater Park is the north side of the Chula Vista Bay front parks, the two parks that we're getting. And the Sweetwater uh, Park goes behind Marine Group, group Boat Works. It's, there's been a lot of work done to go over the, the uh, I don't want to call them drainage ditches. There's a, probably a more environmentally correct way of saying um, the preservation of the, the salt marsh dishes. <laughs> little bridges that they've put in but um but yeah we're hoping for a, for a ribbon cutting um in in january uh, so definitely uh you'll have to make the drive down from big bear for that chair cox um but, but uh, uh welcome marcus and and the other council members and i'd also like to just give a shout out he's not on the call but um in pearl beach council member mark west was an avid bicyclist and a good friend and um and his heart was in this project um, also, and and so he'll be fondly missed. Uh, did I answer your question about Chula Vista? Good. And it's, I, it's around the time that I, and I just won a two night stay at the RV park and the Chula Vista Police Foundation auction <laughs> that we had. So I, I hope you, if you don't have an RV, um, you can camp at our new RV park that's opening next year on the Bayfront and bring your bike because it's right on the Bayshore Bikeway. Absolutely. And they are taking reservations now for people because they have little casitas where you can actually stay there even if you don't have an RV. So it's, uh, they're already booking and they're, they're already booked out halfway into the year next year. So they're, they're booking up quickly. So if you really want to take advantage of the new site, uh, jump on it or as quickly as you can, because it's going to be difficult to get spaces. When do they officially open? What's that? I believe in January. Yeah, I think it's January also. Yep. And I understand the Port District uh, just approved uh, funding for the park that's going to be a little bit further to the south. That's correct. And and that, that was been approved and they're doing the beach in that segment. There are going to be a couple of phases. Um, the first phase will, is funded, and um, that includes the beach and the promenades and the boat launch um, for kayaks and so forth, which will be just south of the Marine Group Boat Works 
facility. Uh, I was hoping that we would get the fund funding for the H Street Pier in this round, but but we didn't. So we've got to figure out how to make that happen for Chula Vista. But it it will be it will be really nice. Great, thanks, Jill, and thanks, uh, Dukey. I hope your plumbing problems got resolved. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Andy, Andy. Did you have some comments you want to make? No. No. Oh. Okay. Anything else for the uh, the good of the cause? Question. I just I want to say that it just goes to show you when it's your last meeting how quickly we can go through a meeting. You just zip through this agenda very quickly <laughs> and yeah. efficiently. Oh. By the way, amazing. <laughs> I was going to suggest uh, on, on the upcoming meetings. It looks like the next meeting will be in February, and you know. Uh, I was never elected as a chair. I just, I guess I just kind of, uh, you know, impose myself. But uh, we will need to go ahead and select a chair and a vice chair at the next meeting, assuming that the uh, uh, the recommendations we made on, on item number uh, four are approved by the uh, Sandak Transportation Committee. Uh, I was just going to suggest that maybe for the next meeting that Andy Henshaw kind of serve as a temporary chair, and then uh, you can go ahead and uh, uh, take the actions to go ahead and elect the chair and vice chair at that uh, at that meeting if there's no objection. I don't know if there has to be a motion uh, for that. If that is in the form of a motion, I would second it. Uh, so procedurally, I don't know what staff thinks, but I, I agree. I think that's a, that's a good, good. Okay, we'll take that as a motion. Is there a second? Second it, unless Andy just doesn't uh, doesn't want to jump to up in the I'm, fourth. Uh, happy to do so. It too hard. Happy to do so, and I could never fill your shoes, uh, Greg. But I will, I will, uh, I will do that for one meeting. Okay. okay. So we have a motion by Councilmember Bush, seconded by uh, Dukey Valderrama from the Port Commission, to have Andy serve as a temporary chair at the next meeting in February. Is there any further discussion? If not, uh, Linda, would you go ahead and call the roll? I can't. I'm not sure um, since that's not specifically on the agenda, but I understand that staff can make arrangements for that temporary chair. So how about I just take your in as input today and make that happen in February? But I don't believe we can. We actually need a vote on that. Yeah, I, I stand corrected, and I think that's an excellent suggestion. So, okay, great. Uh, I think there's a consensus that that's probably a good move. So. Anything else to come before us today? If not, uh, I sincerely again want to thank everybody for their involvement over the years at the Bayshore Bikeway. I think this is one of the greatest uh, recreational elements not only we have in San Diego County, but I can tell you it gets national and even international recognition. And as we, as we get done with these next couple of segments. And again, the good news is most of the money is there, uh, certainly for the national city segment that we, we didn't get a report on today, but I understand that's moving forward. Uh, and uh, the Barrio Logan sections, when they get those done, there's just really a couple of, of uh, smaller segments that still need to be kind of worked out in Chula Vista and, and uh, down by the Salt Works. But uh, this has just been a fantastic project where else can you ride a 24 mile bike ride and get the, the scenic views, the historic views, the uh, salt works, uh, the Navy, the industrial areas, uh, the uh, tremendous amenities in Coronado and Imperial Beach, and not have to probably ride up a hill of any more than 10 feet. Uh, that's pretty phenomenal. And uh, I think it's something all of us share a great deal of pride in and certainly a great deal of ownership in and the, the work that's been done over the years. So I uh, will conclude this meeting unless there's anything else uh, and wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and and uh, look forward to uh, Dukey. You want to say something? Oh, okay. Just waving goodbye. All right. Well, thank you all. And again, uh, Happy New Year. 2021 has got to be a better year than 2020 was uh used to talk about having 2020 hindsight i, I don't want to have 2020 hindsight uh, i want to get through this year and get it behind us and look forward to the great things that are going to happen in 2021 so again congratulations to matthew and to marcus as being a part of a 
really great group of people here. We wish you the best. And it's, uh, uh, again, it's a pleasure to see you all. Thank you very much. And we will stand adjourned to the next meeting in February. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Christmas. Thanks, everyone. All the best. Merry Christmas. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Chair Cox. Thank you very much, Chairman Cox. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye.